Welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. With GenCon 2021 in our rear view now, we started looking toward the rest of this year. Gen Con was probably the last convention this year that we will attend in force, but I know Helena and Benoit will be attending Essen to try and keep our presence there from waning. There's also talk that I'll go to PAX Unplugged in a similar fashion to monitor trends and see what people are gravitating towards in general. Next week, I'll be in Florida to take part in the Dice Tower Autumn Spectacular on October 4th through 6th. I'll be showcasing two Mythic Games products, Enchanter's Darklands and Six Siege the Board Game, and we'll be taking part in several other games during the event as well. So come check that out if you get the chance. Now, we do have updates for Time of Legends Shown of Arc, Steam Watchers, Hell the Last Saga, and Enchanter's Darklands, so let's get to it. For Joan of Arc today, just a quick update on the shipping front. As we've previously stated, two out of the six Joan of Arc 1.5 containers headed for North America are already on the water. Last Friday, though, we learned that two more containers headed for North America have been loaded onto a ship and will be on the water soon. Please be reminded, though, that fulfillment will not begin in North America until all six containers have arrived, but more on that in just a moment. The most up-to-date estimate we have for containers headed to VR distribution for our Australia and New Zealand backers is still October 24th, but again, this is only an estimate and could change in the future. It was estimated that VFI Asia was to pick up their product on September 18th, but until we receive the billing and lading documentation, we can't confirm if that happened or not. Six of the ten containers bound for Meeple Logistics have been loaded with an estimated date of arrival sometime between October 20th through the 24th. But this is only an estimate and may be subject to change. We still have no new information on the containers that will be bound for Spiral Galaxy in the UK, but when we do have information to share, we will certainly update everyone. Now, we've read the questions on the Kickstarter comments as to why we won't stagger the product's release from the North American hub. It's worse in a logistical sense for us to allow that, simply put. Waiting for all the containers to arrive before fulfillment begins helps us secure the fulfillment team assigned to our product at the hub. Splitting up the shipments would lend towards more stalling in the process than expedition. There are only so many people who work in a warehouse with an almost unlimited number of products that could come in. If we schedule our team for the first two containers, after they finish, they will then be assigned to other projects. Then we must request another fulfillment team once the other containers come in. Depending on how many requests or projects came in between then and now, we may not have the same team who knows our order list and packaging. So then they would have to train new people on the team and get them up to speed. And this all equates to added time that we simply don't want. But if we hold everything until the pledges are ready, all the packages will be sorted by state and region, and one team of workers will go through the fulfillment training process once and then hit the ground running. We certainly understand that you're anxiously awaiting the arrival of your game, but please understand that we're trying to be as expeditious as possible to avoid further delays. For Steam Watchers today, as we've reported previously, our 40-foot container was stuck in L.A. Harbor in what was reported as a record-breaking traffic jam of sorts. We've now received word, though, that the container has been unloaded, finally, and that it now must go through customs. Unfortunately, though, we don't have any news on how the customs process is going, so stay tuned on that front. We are still keeping our ears to the ground for news on the UK shipments, too. The last report we had was that it had indeed reached port and was going through customs. But when we have more information, we will share it, and that's a promise. For Hell, the last saga today, we wanted to first correct an error in the last update. The picture of the workshop was posted twice, and a building was missing in the preview. It was the Longhouse, or the House of the Jarl. 
Apart from the buildings, though, we also received additional illustrations for some of the specific scenarios, which will be out of the usual routine, like this zoom-in of the Snekya, or the longboat, at the dock below the hero's camp. Our towel artist, David Demare, has brought together angry weather elements that will give the heroes a hard time as they will have to search for important clues for an investigation on which the cohesion of the clan will depend. This illustration will be set apart by the usual zone separations and the properties of each zone will reflect this change of scale. This next picture is a small spoiler. In the absence of anything truly significant, we'd like to share with you some of the final visual upgrades of the game. The Saga board, which was previously called the Clan board, has received an update. This new version has been validated following feedback from external playtests that showed it had interface flaws, and it is the one that you will find in the box. We will continue showing these little last-minute evolutions for now, knowing that unfortunately the more tangible things like photos of production copies and storage box diagrams and add-ons, etc., will not arrive until the end of the year. Plastic components probably won't be ready for some kind of exhibition until late November, while cardboard components won't be ready until December or January. In the meantime, here is the updated development snapshot that we promise you every month. Please continue to reach out to us, though, and ask questions if you have them. I know that the Paris office is working on finalizing a physical version of an updated English demo of the game and will be sending it to me for a live playthrough by the end of October. So rest assured that we are most definitely moving forward. I, for one, can't wait to get that physical prototype in front of the camera. So stay tuned. For Enchanters today, I thought it would be a good idea to go over a few questions that seem to be rather prolific in our various media outlets right now and just provide answers for them in one place. We try to work together in providing an internal FAQ as we are interacting with you all in various mediums. So here are several questions and their answers that we as the communication team have encountered more frequently. 1. Does Darklands fit in the deluxe box? Simply, yes, it does. Number two, when will the reprinted cards and dividers be shipped out? All the replacement cards and dividers will be shipped out at the same time as the Retail Edition and the Darklands expansion. Three, there have been multiple kinds of questions regarding the card quality of Enchanters, and so I thought to combine them all into one answer. The card quality of the reprinted cards and Darklands will be that of the East Quest expansion from the Kickstarter. We'll be offering replacements of the old cards that some backers still have so that they match the new ones, not vice versa. This will ensure that everybody who already has Enchanters will enjoy all the new products that we produce for Enchanters with no compatibility issues. Fourth, when will you release sleeves that match Darklands? We're going to release a Mythic Games sleeves line as a full separate product very soon. It will include sleeves that fit all of our games, and you will be able to get whatever combination you want. So stay tuned for that as well. Fifth, where will Enchanters be shipped from? Well, depending on where the customer lives, from the equivalent hub. We have hubs in Europe, UK, the USA, Asia, Australia, New Zealand. And we'll follow the same principle as our Kickstarter campaigns, so there will be friendly shipping to the US, Canada, EU, UK, and Australia, New Zealand. Backers in other countries will need to pay custom taxes depending on their country's specific laws. Sixth, what do backers and late pledgers have to do to get their replacement cards? Now, we're currently weighing the options available to handle this logistical issue, and once we have arrived at a definite answer, we will be letting you know. And finally, there seems to be some confusion about the retail version and how the customers will save over $60 by getting Darklands now as opposed to waiting until later. All the previously produced Enchanters content, including the Darklands expansion, will be reconfigured and made available in a broader retail approach over a period of about one and a half years. 
all the kingdom decks will be split up into dual decks holding two kingdoms and each dual deck product. Additionally, we're configuring three medium-sized products, each of which will introduce new game mechanisms. So for example, the banners and classes deck will go into one medium-sized product. This means that all the banners and classes cards from the previous expansions, Darklands included, will be part of that medium-sized product. The other two medium-sized expansions will contain the Overlords in one and Quests in another. Unfortunately, we can't forecast what the price of those medium-sized products will be when they enter retail distribution, as it is challenging, to say the least, to estimate how production costs and shipping costs might change in the next one and a half years. However, if the medium-sized products were made available today, they would retail for $30 each. So if you do the math, three medium products at $30 each plus three kingdom deck expansions at $15 each equals $135 in the future for all the Darklands materials versus $30 in the eShop right now. Now we're looking at some way to make this a bit clearer soon, whether it's making a video that explains it or something similar to that. The comps team will continue monitoring all the various avenues of communication and respond in kind, and I sincerely hope that this has been informative for everyone. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or just to see what he might spoil. But even if he doesn't spoil anything, as I've said... It's usually a pretty fun time anyway. I'll be hosting a live Q&A on Friday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, going over my Gen Con haul, as it were. It's not very large, but it might be interesting anyway. And I'll also be answering any questions that you may want to ask. Since I'll be out of town next Monday and Tuesday, there won't be a newscast next week, but it'll be back in swing the following week. And that's it for today. Stay safe. Play some games while you're at it. And we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.